Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 17 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I will need you to pour yourself a nice enormous mug of iced coffee and I will need you guys to get out your Jetson Nano gear. Hey, want to take a second and thank you guys that are helping me out over on Patreon. You're a huge encouragement to me. You guys that are not helping yet, look down in the description. There's a link to my Patreon account. Think about hopping over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and start talking about what we are going to learn today. What we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to process mouse clicks or mouse events in OpenCV. Now as we really begin to go in and develop artificial intelligence algorithms, we're going to need to be able to interact with the user and we're going to need to be able to interact with the window that we are working in. And one of the best ways to do that is using the mouse. So we need to know where the mouse is and we need to know whether it has been clicked or not. And that's what we are going to learn today. So I will get out of your way. <clears throat> I'll need you to come over to your Jetson Nano and open up Visual Studio. Okay, you remember that we are working in a folder called PyPro, which is on our desktop. And then we are working in a folder called OpenCV. So I need you to click on the OpenCV <clears throat> folder to select it. Then come up and select at your main folder this little page with the plus sign on it to create a new file. And then we are going to call this OpenCV. I'm going to call it 6 and then dash. I'm going to say mouse click. And then don't forget the .py. The .py tells Visual Studio that it's a Python program. Kind of important. Click Enter. Boom. We now have the program uh, environment up and we've got a blank program ready to write. Now what we do is we start at that base program that we're using on all of these lessons and that base program fires up our camera. So let's go ahead and get that. You might have it saved over here somewhere, but in case you don't, we will come to a Chrome browser. We will go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. Com. All right. And then you want to search on probably the simplest thing to search on would be Pi Camera. And if you search the site on Pi Camera, you see this post here. You can click on it and you'll get that code that's the starting point for firing up the camera. And rather than retyping this, we will just come in, <clears throat> click on those two little pages like that. That selects the program. Right mouse click and copy. We now have it so we can come over and close this. And now come back to Visual Studio and paste it in there. All right, a couple of little bookkeeping things that we need to do. That since I am running the Raspberry Pi camera, I will uncomment out this, which sets the parameters, and this, which fires the camera. If you are using a webcam, you would comment out instead this line. And then you would either put a 0 or a 1 here. If 0 doesn't work, put a 1. But one of those two should work for a webcam. So now we should be ready to run the camera. There is one other little thing that I really like. I like my uh, window to be in a certain position. So I am going to come over here. And after I show the window, I am going to do a cv dot move uh, window. I hope that it recognizes this. Yeah, move window. Okay. Click enter. And then it is going to need some parameters. What window do I want to move? I want to move nano cam. And where do I want to move it? To 0, 0. And that should put it up in the corner. So we keep deliberate control of where our windows are. Let's go ahead and see if this works just to make sure everything is copacetic before we move on. Right mouse click run. 
it pops up and there it is where we told it to be everything's good cue to quit on this particular program okay now we are ready or I hope you're ready to start processing a mouse click okay so this is a little involved so I'm going to kind of be very deliberate in explaining it so you understand what it is that is going on okay so we are going to come over and uh, come up to the top of the program and sort of after this flip equal to business we need to set up a uh, mouse callback and that's basically you set up a listener to listen for something happening with the mouse and if something happens with the mouse then it calls a program okay but you got to tell it where to listen well what do we want to listen our window is called nanocam but at this point in the program python python doesn't know anything about that window called nanocam so we got to do a little command here which is cv2 dot named window and then the named window is single quote nano cam all right now what you got to see is this is the same window that we use down here but we just got to kind of define it before we reference it and we're not in the while loop yet so we got to kind of define it here in order to be able to do the most excellent cv2 dot set mouse call back okay and so this is going to be our listener listening for activity on the mouse and there's some parameters that we have to have here okay it's pretty simple but the parameter that we have to have is what window are we going to be listening in you guessed it nano cam since we're referencing it here that's why we had to kind of define it in the uh, line of code before and then it's relatively simple we just have to now tell it that you're listening for a mouse event if there's any mouse event what function do you want to run well we have to define the function but I'm just gonna call the function click C-L-I-C-K so when this command is run a listener is set up and anytime a mouse event is detected what does it do it calls a special function called click okay does that make sense well if it calls click we darn well better define what click is okay so I will come up here and then what I will need to do is I will need to define that function and I think I will just do it right up here at the very top okay we will do it well we've got to import CVT with CV2 first of course okay we've got to import CV2 of course and let me come over here okay just got to get a little bookkeeping taken care of here okay so we're going to import CV2 and now what we are going to do is we are going to define a define def define a function what is that function click right because that's what we said it was going to be now because this is the callback function these parameters have to match what cv2 cv2 is expecting so the first is event that is which mouse event occurred right it could be a left button click right button click scroll move you know it could be a lot of different things but it is an event and then where was the X position of the mouse when that occurred and where is the Y position of the mouse where, when that occurred and that's the X and the Y in the window which window nanocam so remember nanocam starts at 00, zero and then goes to 64480 so it's kind of that parameter space that that XY is in all right now there's a couple of parameters we're not going to use but they've got to be there and that is flags don't worry about it and params don't worry about it now a function starts uh, kind of like a for loop or an if statement you put a colon there now you get the indent and anything that is indented is indeed going to be inside of that uh, inside of that function okay so now we need to just kind of see if we can process the event okay so what event are we interested in let's say that it is a left button click so I'm gonna say if event equal equal CV 
two dot what e v e n t underscore left button down. Okay, so you see the left button down. So now, if anything happens with the mouse, you're going to end up in this function. Okay. But once you're in this function, if the thing that happened with the mouse was a left mouse click, now I'm going to be inside this if statement. If I put my colon there. Okay, so I put my colon. Now, if you're in here, what do we want to do? Well, let's just kind of see if this works, if this whole structure works before we go too much further. So I'm just going to say print. And what am I going to print? I'm going to print the... the mouse event was and then I will print what event so we'll see what the mouse event was <coughs> and then I am going to print what the X and then I will print the string comma and then I will print Y so this if this is working right, we're going to process our first mouse event, and if it's a left mouse click, it should print out what the event was and where it was. Are you ready? Please hold your breath. Okay, let's see. We are going to run Python file. Okay. And nothing happened. What did I do wrong here? Let me try again. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Boom! Okay. Now, I need you to be looking down here and where the printout is occurring. I'm going to come over with the mouse. I'm going to do a left mouse click, and boom, the, the mouse event was 1, and it was at the X position 160 and the Y position 130. If I come up here in the corner, it should be a lot closer to 0, 0. Yes, at 1, 2, down here should be about 640, 480. Yes, okay. Now, what is this mouse event was 1? Well, what you can see is the parameter event underscore L button down is just a constant and it's the constant one so I could have just said if event equal equal one if you remembered if you memorized what all your mouse events were but it's easier to use the names but you can see we just processed our first mouse event and we are just a few minutes into this program so that is really really cool so this is the problem though you really don't want to be looking down here. You really want to be interacting with your image. Now, why does this freeze up as I'm using my mouse here? Do you see how this frees up? Because it's actually going into that function because moving the mouse is a mouse event, but it's not a click. So it sort of freezes up because it's staying inside of that function just so that you know that it's trying to process a mouse event. Okay, now what you might think you would really like to interact with your image and so what you would really like is maybe you would like to put a little circle here where you click so you could add a circle where you click to your image and that would be kind of a neat thing to do so you might think that you would come over here and that you would do one of those cv2 dot circle commands this is the problem though I want you to think about the program flow the main action in the program is happening in this while loop. <coughs> you grab a frame, you show a frame, you grab a frame, you show a frame. And then if there's a mouse click, you run up here, you do this, and then you come back, grab a frame, show a frame, grab a frame, show a frame. So if I put a circle at this point in this if statement, what is the problem? immediately you would hop back here grab the next frame show the next frame you would not even see the circle being shown so what I need to do is I need to I need to draw that circle here alright but here's the problem okay here is the problem these variables inside a function in Python are local variables so the function click knows what X and Y an event is, but down here in the main program in the while loop, it doesn't know those variables. All right, so what I need to do is I've got to get these variables out of the function and into the main program. And I do that by making the variables, the variables that I'm going to use, I've got to make them global. So I'm going to create a global variable, and I'm going to call it PNT. Okay, and that is going to be a point like x, y, okay, 
what is that? P N T. Okay. And then global, I'm going to have a variable, and that global variable is going to be EVT, which is going to end up being the event. Now I'd need to come down here. <clears throat> And I've created the variables. Now if I come down here, what I need to do is I need to set them. P and T is going to be equal to the tuple X comma Y. So I just took those kind of secret variables X and Y and I just exposed them to the whole world or at least the whole, uh, the whole Python program. All right, and then I also need to uh, set EVT equal to I'm just going to set it equal to event, okay? Or I could set it one because if you're in here, it's going to be one. But I'll just set it to EVT. So I've made those two variables global variables. Now there's still one little problem. You have to look down here, and if I have made the if I made the statement, if when do I want to draw the circle? Well, if EVT equal 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 what one? All right. Now this is the kind of quirky thing that you got to see though. If I've never had a mouse event, it is not going to know what EVT is and the program is going to crash. Okay, so I've got to come up here and I've got to define EVT out here and I'm just going to set it to minus one. Why? Because minus one is not one. And that means before there is a mouse click, I will never get inside this if statement. Okay, make sure you understand this. Okay, make sure you understand this. All right, now if there is a mouse event and if it is a less left button click, then EVT is going to be one. And then what am I going to want to do? Well, I am going to want to just start by just simply drawing a circle. So let's just come in here and let's say CV2 dot circle circle cvt dot circle and then where do I want to put it I want to put it on frame because that is the image we read it in as frame and then where do I want to put it I want to put it at point point is that tuple that now the world knows which is x comma y which is where the mouse was when it was clicked okay and then let's have a radius of five okay and then let's have the color zero for blue 0 for green and 255 for red. So this is going to be a red dot 5 pixels wide and then we will want it to be solid so we'll put it at minus 1. Right a couple of lessons ago we went over all this so you should know this. Okay so now let's right mouse click and let's run this puppy. Ah! Is it running? What's wrong? Maybe I didn't quit it before so let me cue for quit. Okay, there it is. That's the new one. All right. So now, the moment of truth. I am going to left button down. Boom! I got a dot. Oh, wait a minute. I want it somewhere else. That's kind of creepy. I don't like it on my eye. Or let's say I wanted to mark the position of the microphone. I could mark it. Right. And also, if you look down here, what you can see is you can actually see where that microphone is, right? It's at 440.285, and you put a dot on it, all right? So you, can you guys see that? Let me move that up a little bit to make sure that you can see that. You see how we're printing out where that mouse event is down here? Okay, so let's do another click. So you see how it's updating that X and Y position? All right, I think that's pretty cool. But again, <clears throat> I really don't want to have to be looking down in my Python terminal in my console to see what, where that is. Really, where do we want that? We want it printed out beside the dot. So how would we do that? Well, we would qu quit this, and we would come back in here. Again, we've got to do it here so that every time through it will show. And so what I am going to need to do is I am going to need to do a put text, but I have to first define a font. <coughs> and my font is going to be CV2 dot, we'll call it font underscore Hershey. And then what I want is plain. So I will just come down there and select it. So now I have a font. Okay. 
and now I am going to need to create a string, right? I want to print the x comma y. I want to print point, but the problem is point p and t is a tuple, and it's kind of like a, a tuple of an integer comma integer, and this put text doesn't want an integer. It wants a string, so what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to create a my string, which is my str, my string, and that is going to be the str, the string value of what p and t. So it's going to take that tuple and it's going to make it <coughs> a string. I think that will work quite nicely. And now I need to do a what? cv2 dot put text. And I got to say, where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it on the frame. Okay and then I am going to need to put what my I need to close this over here so it's out of your way okay my str so that's what I'm going to print is my string and then where do I want to put it pnt the tuple pnt that says where we're going to put it okay got to tell it what font well I just set it up font <coughs> and then how big do I want it to be? I'm going to make it a size 1. That's pretty small. And then again, I think I will make it red. No, I'm going to make it blue. The dot's going to be red and the font or the text is going to be blue. So I will put 255 comma 0 comma 0 sort of as a tuple. I forgot my comma. Okay. And now I will put it a weight of 2. All right. I think that should put it that should put the location on the uh, frame. So now we're going to run. Okay. Hold your breath. Left mouse click. Boom! That was at 107, 128, and that matches what is going on down here. And I do need to indeed move this up. Window management is the big challenge as we're doing this kind of stuff. Okay, I think that's going to work. And now I need to peek over here to get this. And then I'm going to quit. All right, so now I should have everything ready to go. Let's try running it again. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Okay, so I click here. And wherever I click, it puts a red dot and it shows me what the uh, it shows me the font that is a little bit light that's a little bit small I'm gonna do an experiment and I really shouldn't do this but I wonder if it will take uh, float point values for the font size so let's come back over here and I do need to kill it I think okay quit right mouse click run Python file in terminal all right. Hey, that works. I think that looks good. I can see it. Boom. That is great. That is really working, and that is working well. Okay. <clears throat> now, the thing that I want you to think about, though, is that's one of the things that you might want. But what if, like, I wanted to lift up my cell phone, and I wanted to see the position of the four corners? Okay. What if I wanted to see the position of the four corners? In that case, I need to not just move the dot around. I need to keep the old ones. Okay, I need to keep the old ones. Now, how are we going to do that? you got to think about this a little while. This is a little trickier than what you think. Because I can't just do another one because it only knows one XY coordinate point. Okay, so wherever point is... It'll put it there, but that last one I put, that's lost because I read a new frame, I show a new frame. Whatever is not between those two things is lost. So how would I do that? Hmm. I need to create an array. All right. So we're going to come back to the top of the program. Okay, we're going to come back to the top of the program. <coughs> and we are going to create an array. All right. So we are going to create an array. And where would I do that? Well, here I 
made this EVT up here. Okay, and so what I need to also do, I need to, hmm, I need to create an array of PNTs. Okay, an array of tuples. And I will call that array chord for coordinate. And I'm going to create it as just an empty array. Now this is the crazy thing. In, in Python with OpenCV, the variables inside the function are local unless you make them global. But it seems like the, the variables are local, but it seems like the uh, arrays are global. And so I don't need to come down now and make coordinate global because it just seems like it's born global. At least that's the way that it seems to me. Okay, so we're going to come down here and we're going to do these same things. Okay, but what we need to do now is we need to put, we create PNT, that's the XY value of the last mouse click, but we need to now do what with it? We need to add it to this array coordinate. So what are we going to do? We are going to append to that array. What are we going to append? We are going to append P N T. All right. So now every time you la uh, left mouse click, that array is going to get larger. Does that make sense? Hey, I wonder, uh, <clears throat> Maybe instead of printing out PNT just for fun, we should print. Okay, we should print C O O R D. And that way, as we click, we should see the list getting longer and longer and longer. All right, that might be kind of cool. And so now we will be keeping track of that. Okay, at this point, the problem with this if event is equal equal one, the problem with that is that would just still print one thing, one circle. So we need to print lots of circles. How many? However many times we click the mouse. So you can't just do print circle, print circle, print circle. You've got to do it a specific number of times. We would do that with a for loop, okay? And so what I am going to do here is I am going to create a for loop. All right, so think about that for just a little bit, okay? So instead of doing all of this nonsense in an if statement, what I am going to do is eliminate that tab over, and I'm going to say for, okay? Now, we want to do all the points P, N, T, S. I know this is not that original point. That original point is P, N, T. This is a new variable, but for points P, N, T, S, which is going to be a tuple, for points in the list, what is the list I want to step through? C O O R D. Okay. Now, if there's no values in C O O R D, you won't do anything in here. So you don't need the if statement. You only get in the for loop if there's something to do. So the variable tuple variable points is going to step through the chord list, the chord array. Does that make sense? And then what am I going to want to do each time through? I am going to want to CV2 dot, uh, I'm going to want to CV2 dot circle. And then where do I want the circle? Frame. Okay. And then now where do I want it? PNTS, okay, because this PNTS will always have the tuple for that position in the list. So the first one will be the first tuple, then the next, then the next, then the next. This is that new variable PNTS that is stepping through the array coordinate. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Okay, and then how big do I want it to be? Five, and then what color? I want 0, 0, 255. All right. And then I want comma minus 1 for a solid circle. So I think what this is going to do, now this isn't going to put the text on it yet, but let's just see if we can add a lot of dots. Okay. So I will come in, run Python file in terminal. I get this. Holding our breath, click. And I got an error. PNT is not defined. Let's look up there, see what happened. 
So I appended P and T. Ah, I see. I must have erased that where I defined what P and T is. P and T is equal to x comma y. That's a rookie mistake. I hope you guys found that. Now I am appending the PNT. Let's try it. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Okay, we're going to do a right mouse click, or a left mouse click. I'm sorry. Are you ready? Boom! Moment of truth. Boom! Moment of truth. Look at that! All right! <coughs> Our little scheme worked. Our little scheme worked. Okay, so we can just go crazy, right? Also, do you see down here how the list is getting longer and longer? That array is getting longer and longer as I add uh, dots to it. Now, do you see what our problem is? Like, do I really want to have to kill the program to get rid of that mess I just created? Not really. So let's try to do a little bookkeeping where we can go in and clear it if we want. So we're going to say Q. Now, I want you to come down here and think about this This. Uh, cv2 dot wait key here it's looking to see if a key is pressed well if the key that is pressed is q okay <coughs> what are you going to do you're going to break okay but what we want we want to look for a different key if cv2 dot wait mm, let's see is this I'm going to do it a little different because I don't want to keep making it wait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to say key event <coughs> is equal to cv2 dot wait key one like that. So I just I'm going to do the read. And now on the if statement, so I'm only going to look for that event one time. And then I'm going to say if <coughs> key, key event equal equal Q, I'm going to break out of it, right? Or if key event, and that had... Uh, better be a equal equal ORD the value of now I'm not looking for a Q but I'm looking for a what a C C is for clear so I'm gonna put a C in if the mount if the button or the key that is pushed is C what do I want to do how do I clear out all of that mess that we created well all that you've got to see here is is that it's gonna erase itself you just don't want to put it back in there. So what is it that you really want to clear? Coordinate is equal to, boom. It gets rid of all the values out of coordinate, okay? Now the other thing that you got to see though is that would be a problem that if you hit C and cleared out all of those values, I think that would take care of it. I really think that would take care of it. So if you see it's going to clear it, it won't go back in that for loop. I think this might work. So let's just take a quick look at this. Right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. All right, so let's see. All right, moment of truth. Press C. Boom. They went away. Okay, so you see if I sit here and I make a mess. It's like the measles or the chicken pox. Would that be measles or chicken pox? You know, I had both measles and chicken pox, and I lived through it. I lived through it. I had measles and chicken pox. I don't understand. It's like they act like these things are deadly diseases nowadays. Okay, so now look at that. Now I put C, and it clears it. Whoa. That is really great. Okay, so that's looking really good. We need to do a little bit more now. What we would really want, though, remember we would want to, like, pick up the phone and then show the phone, uh, okay, and then, like, put the coordinates around. So we really want to print the coordinates of where things are, and so we need to do a little bit more. I will 
now that I've cleared it, I will queue out of this uh, queue out of this program. So up here and in this, we need to besides putting a dot, we need to go back and put that uh, that font back in. So we will say font is equal to cv2 dot uh, font underscore and then we're going to do Hershey plane you can play around with these different fonts and see what you really like I kind of like a simple one and then what I need to do is I need to create my string again and my string is going to be uh, the string okay not a P and T not a P and T but what has the right value right now of that X and Y? It's PNTS. So I want the string value of PNTS. All right. And now that I have that, I need to do a CV2 dot CV2 dot put put text. So I'm going to put the text back on there. Where am I going to put it? On frame. Okay. What am I going to put? My string. Where am I going to put it? At the tuple PNTS, which should be updated every time through the list because it is the index on the for loop. And then what do I want? I need to put the font, which I just defined. That should be good. We decided 1.5 was pretty good. And then I want the font to be blue, so I will put 255, comma, 0, comma, 0. I'm going to get further out of your way here. 25500. And then what do I want? I want a heaviness of about 2. That kind of makes it a, a heavier line. Could it really be that simple? Could it really be that simple? Did I close all my parentheses out? Let's try it. Run Python file in terminal. All right. Moment of truth. Here is my phone. OK. And then I'm going to come in and corner, 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 corner. Look at that. And I've got those coordinates. You can see now I can hit clicks clear and it all clears up. Uh, you can see that I need to probably adjust things a little bit like the font is a little big to... You know, it's kind of running into each other when I'm doing something like that. But that is pretty cool. Let's look up here. You can see, yeah, that's close to zero, zero. You can see that that's close to the other corner. So this is just pretty darn amazing. So I'm going to say C for clear. All right. Guys, you see what power this is? It's like if I wanted to do some image manipulation, I might need to know where this button is. I could come and click and I could find the value of where that button is. And then I could go in and do my coding knowing where that little button is or knowing where that button is okay or I could like find all the buttons and identify all the buttons and it would show where it is all right now there is one more thing <clears throat> that we're gonna do that would be kind of useful and that is I don't just need to know where it is like what if I was doing something to recognize like I'm trying to recognize an object and I'm gonna recognize it on color like this little red thing here I might need to know what are the parameters, what is the RGB values of that. So I would want to be able to come up and click on it and get, get not just its position, but get its RGB values. All right. And so let me show you how to do that. We're going to quit out of this and we're going to come back over here. All right. So we're going to kind of now how many mouse events are we going to be looking for? Now, instead of one mouse event, we are going to be looking for two mouse events. We still use that same listener that we already created. Okay, we still use that same uh, function, right? We still have this, this set mouse callback. That's our listener, and it still calls click. But now we're going to look for a left mouse click is going to do the position in the dots as we've already done but the right mouse button we want to grab what the RGB values are okay so here what I will do is I will put another if statement a new if statement if event equal equal what am I looking for cv2 dot 
event and this time I will be looking for R button down <coughs> R button down okay now if R button is down what I'm going to do is I'm going to see where it was so I'm just going to do a print uh, and I'll print the <coughs> X comma Y again this will just put it down in the little console in case that is useful all right now I need to get the blue value of that pixel all right so I'm going to get the blue value and it is going to be equal to I'm getting the blue value of which pixel that pixel is in what image it is in image frame and what you got to see is guys you got to see frame is not a picture really frame is just a huge matrix it's a lot of rows and a lot of columns but it's a two-dimensional matrix where you have rows and you have columns and that X and Y is telling you what row you're on and what column you're on it is telling you your row and your column okay so frame blue just the simple number blue is going to look inside that array frame okay and which pixel does it want to look at it wants to look at the row and the column now what you got to see though is this is the confusing part row is which variable row is y okay and column is x now I just gotta I don't want to slow down too much but I just gotta explain this because this is really kind of confusing when we're dealing with a coordinate axis we always think of x comma y right we think of x comma y in a coordinate system so the first number is x and the su second number is y but when we're dealing with a matrix a matrix you always think of row column row comes first R by C row column well in this crazy world the row is the which value the Y value and that's why we put Y first so this is saying take the array frame and go X rows down and go Y columns over and that is one pixel and then you look at that pixel and at that pixel there is a tuple that tuple has got B comma G comma R so I've got one pixel and that pixel is not a number it's a tuple and that tuple has B G R so if I want the B value which position you say the first position but remember in programming you start counting it zero <coughs> so the first number is the zeroth number and now I have blue okay now I want green and so that's going to be equal to frame frame all right and same thing Y comma X comma what it's the next one over which is the one which is the second number in the tuple and then you guessed it red is equal to frame that array y, y comma x comma 2 guys you really need to understand this a picture a frame is a matrix row and column okay rows and columns it's a two-dimensional matrix rows and columns at each position is a is a tuple the tuple has three numbers G or uh, B comma G comma R and then I can pull those out so now I know the color of that pixel where I clicked and for right now just for fun <coughs> let's just print it so I'm gonna say print and then what am I going to print I'm going to print blue comma green comma red and then I'm gonna take this other huge print statement out down here so it doesn't mess me up remember how we were printing coordinate here somewhere 
maybe it was up here yeah I printed the whole array I don't want to mess things up with that all right all right so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just be, gonna be printing blue green red just to see if I'm grabbing the pixel okay so let's see what happens here so I'm gonna right mouse click run Python file in terminal all right the moment of truth okay so now let's just make sure our other program still working so you see I can uh, yeah I can still do that right I can still get those but now I am going to right mouse click and if I right mouse click here which number would I expect to be the biggest I would expect the middle number to be the biggest because it's blue green red and this is kind of green and look at that okay do you see down here it picked off it picked off let's see if I can highlight that blue is 73 green is 118 and red is 0 and so in fact that really looks like green okay that looks like green now let's see if I can do this let's see if I can grab this red here and remember I'm right mouse clicking look at that red is the biggest I wish I had blue oh I do have blue look I can click on the four because that's really on the frame and I'm gonna right mouse click and look at that 255 255 zero so you see I am reading the color of an individual pixel and if you like use Photoshop this is a lot like the eyedropper tool right it's like the eyedropper you're going out and you're grabbing in real time live the color of a pixel okay but I want something a little more exciting than that okay I want something a little more exciting than that so what I think I am going to do is I am going to create a new window we haven't done that before we're going to create just a new window and I'm going to call that or a new image okay a new frame but instead of reading the frame from the camera I'm just going to create the frame and I'm going to do that by saying and you know what darn it to do this I'm we're gonna have to go back to our old friend numpy so I'm gonna say import numpy as NP okay then that will allow me to create a matrix a matrix that is two-dimensional by doing image is equal to NP dot zeros that's the function NP dot zeros and now I've got to give it some uh, sizes so how big do I want this image to be well I want it to be 250 rows by 250 columns and then how many numbers do I need at each pixel three so I would need a pick I need a tuple with three numbers in it okay now actually I need another set of parentheses around this so we go here and here okay so now what is this saying it's saying numpy go out and create a matrix that I'm gonna call image and I want it 250 rows by 250 columns in each position have a tuple with three numbers in it that is what I just did there now I've got to kind of tell it the format for the numbers don't worry about this just do it it's NP dot U U I N T be careful U I N T 8 and that's just giving it the format okay you know we could do a whole lesson on this but sometimes just do it okay so that's going to create a new window or that's going to create a new array and that new array is going to be called IMG now we want to do something down in this if statement with IMG now IMG isn't going to update every time in the while loop so we can actually make the action happen here because it's only going to change when there is a mouse event but what do we want it to do okay well we printed it already but instead of just printing it I want to create a string okay and that string is going to be uh, what will we call that string how about call it color string and what, what do we want color string to be we want color string to be equal to the string value of blue remember that is an integer that we read from the frame array 
okay and then I want to uh, what do I want to do I want to add a comma so I will add a pinned <clears throat> and then the string comma and then I want to add the string of green so I'm turning green to a string and adding it to my string and then I want to add another comma which is a string and then I want to add string of red so now that should just create a string that is just kind of blue comma green comma red because if I'm gonna display it I need that okay and I believe that will work if I didn't make a mistake you guys are probably yelling at me if I made a mistake there but uh, I think that will work I now have color string now what I want is I want that box IMG that IMG was just an empty array so it would probably if we tried to show that IMG matrix it would probably just show black because we didn't put any numbers in there so we need to actually put some numbers in there so I'm gonna say IMG and this is a matrix so I can address it like this but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the colon and that's just saying take the whole enchilada take the whole matrix image from the first row first column or the zeroth row zero column all the way to the end row end column take all of those points that's what that col colon means it takes everything and then what do I want to set it to well I want to set it to the color what blue green red and so now whatever that pixel was that I grabbed it's going to make the whole box, the whole frame, the whole window that we're working in that color. Uh-huh. Okay. So now that is going to be blue, green, red. <clears throat> and now it is that color. So what do we want to do now? Let's think. okay well now I need to do a, a put text right I need to do a put text so I'm gonna make a new P a new FNT I gotta give it a font and that font is going to be CV2 dot font underscore Hershey and we kinda like the plane right alright now I want this is the thing I want to print so that window that's going to pop up is going to be the color that I picked but I also want to print on there what color it is but if I grabbed a red pixel and it makes the box red if the font color is red you're not going to see it will make it white well what if I grabbed white so I sort of want the color that I print the text in to be the opposite color of what I grabbed and so we're going to create a new color R our new R is going to be equal to 255 minus red okay and then green is going to be equal to 255 minus green and then B is going to be equal to 255 minus blue. So you see, I'm creating a new RGB, and the only thing that this RGB is going to be used for is the color of the text that I'm putting. So I'm guaranteed that it will be kind of opposite of whatever the background is. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Ask me if it doesn't make sense. All right. So now. I'm going to create a tuple TP is going to be equal to what B comma G comma R so now that is the new tuple for the opposite color of the background and now I think I am ready to do my put text CV2 dot put text and that would not be good put text alright and now where do I want to put it on IMG 
and then <clears throat> what do I want to put there? Well, color string. That is what I am going to print. And did I do that really color string? Yep, that looks good. And then where do I want to put it? Mm, it's going to be on a fixed value. I'm going to put it like at the point 10, comma 25. And then I want to put F. I want to put. I've got to come out of that tuple. Come out of the tuple, comma, and then I got to tell it the font, which is FNT. How big? I'm going to put it as one. And then I need to put what is the uh, thing I'm going to put there, or what is the color? The color is going to be TP because I just set that up there, right? TP is going to be B, comma, G, comma, R. And so this is that opposite color that I just created. And then I'm going to put a weight of two. Man, what is the, how many million mistakes did I make here? I don't know, but we are going to run this thing anyway and we're going to see. Okay, I almost ran into that. Okay, CC, CV2.putText, image color string. Put it at the point 1025 FNT. One is how big and two is how heavy. So now let's right mouse click and let's run this thing and see what happens. I'm kind of encouraged. I'm kind of encouraged that it didn't crash. Okay, let's make sure our old functionality still works. Our old functionality was putting some points on here. That looks good. Are you ready to use the color picker? All right, I'm going to now right mouse click. Ah! Scalar value for argument color is not numeric. It's one of these. I can tell you what it's going to be is I used a string when I should have used a variable, or I used a variable when I should have used a string. And so this is in line 29. And so this is right here. Okay, <clears throat> maybe this red and green and blue. Okay, we grab blue, green, and red from frame, and it probably grabbed it as a string. And so you know what I think we need to do? I think we need to int these things, int. Always, man, this is, this is kind of strange because sometimes you get a number and it says three comma five or something like that, but it's the string three comma five. And in this case, it went out and let's say it grabbed three, but it was the character three or the char the, the string two five seven, not the number two five seven. So we're going to have to float those things. I mean, int them. I didn't mean to say float. Okay. All right, so now it's the number 255 minus the integer value of the string blue. I think this should work, All right? So now we are going to right mouse click, run Python file and terminal. And I didn't quit it the time before, so we've got a little housekeeping to keep track of here. I will quit. It'll pop back up once it quit. Okay, now let's make sure we didn't break the other thing. All right, we're still getting our pixel locations. We are going to do a <clears throat> color grab. Right mouse click. Okay. <laughs> all right. What, what did we do? We we went to all of this trouble to create um, to create IMG, but what did we never do? So I'm going to be a good boy and quit. What did we not do? We went to all of this work, but what did we not do? We never did a CV2.IM show. And what do I want to I am show my color, which was our new which is going to be our new window. And then what are we going to show IMG? Because we've done everything that we needed to to IMG. And now we're going to show it. Let's see if this works. Right mouse click, run Python file and terminal. All right, make sure our original thing works. Left mouse click, left mouse click, left mouse click, left mouse click, clear. Left mouse click, left mouse click, left mouse click, left mouse click. We are going to try to color grab right here. Right mouse click, hold your breath. Ah, look at that. 
it gives me the blue green red value uh-huh let me move this up where you can see it gives me the blue green red value and then it shows me right where I grabbed so let's see if I could grab this this is a little redder look at that look at that microphone color green screen background almost white okay you see the whiter you get let's all look at something really dark this should be a very low number low number low number yeah okay let's see if I can really get something here ah, my phone turns on when I pick it up okay it's hard to get something really black wrong mouse click okay look at that that's very low number okay C for clear all right so we made ourselves a little color picker now let's say that we were trying you see we're starting edge into getting ready to do some artificial intelligence what if I wanted to track an item on color so I could introduce into the scene an item of a specific color like let's say my key ring here and if I'm going to track my key ring I need to know what color it is so I could come over here and I could see what its position is and then I could right mouse click and I could look and see what color it is and then I could try to track on that color so you see this is very 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 helpful okay guys this has been really <clears throat> I've had a lot of fun with this you guys this is an important one so you might have followed along with me and you might have gotten your program to work but you've really got to understand what we're doing and so if there is a program if there is a lesson that you need to go back now and kind of watch again and then start with a blank sheet of paper and see if you can do these things because this is really really important we've got to be able to interact with our screen we've got to be able to interact with our frame and with our window and we've got to be able to do it with the mouse and so this is a really 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 important one it's one you need to be able to kind of understand and if you don't understand it do the lesson again try to do it on your own ask questions down below okay now what do we have coming up next <clears throat> the next thing we're going to do the other way that we can interact with things is to have slider bars so up next in the next le lesson we're going to put slider bars and as you slide the slider bar you can read what the slider bar is and so you can use the slider bar and you can use the mouse and then you become very interactive with your window with your frame and we will need that then in future lessons and so that's the next thing that we'll be doing and then after that lesson we'll really start getting in and start doing some uh, you know some tracking of objects okay and so we're really we're starting to get into some real business here alright guys if you like this video think about giving me a thumbs up subscribe to the channel when you subscribe make sure you ring the bell so that you get notifications for the future lessons and guys really uh, really appreciate it when you help me out on patreon this equipment i'm always needing to update my software this this wirecast software is really expensive and you know i've got issues with usb bandwidth it's just when you help me i can deliver a better product for you okay uh you guys leave your questions down below hope you enjoyed this lesson and i will look forward to seeing you next week paul mccorder from toptechboy.com i will talk to you guys later